To enable the matrix sampler, I'm going to open a new MIDI track in Multitrack Studio. In version 1.8, you can now import a MIDI file directly into a track from AudioShare. While holding the copy button, swipe right and select Import from AudioShare. Select to file and import. To activate the matrix sampler, along press the MTSI button. Single clicking on the button again now brings up the matrix sampler window. I'm going to start a second MIDI track in order to record directly into the sampler. I'll need to enable either an IAA instrument or a multi-track studio instrument to do this. Once you find the note or sound you want, click copy on the MIDI note, open the matrix sampler, select the correct sample, and paste. The MIDI note will be automatically rendered as an audio file in the sampler. Repeat the process with additional notes as desired. The MIDI drum track I imported has notes in C3, D3, and B flat 3. The 16 cells of the sampler utilize MIDI notes 36 to 51, where note 36 corresponds to C3. Holding down a cell will display the note corresponding to that cell in the lower left corner. Instead of rendering MIDI audio from a, another MIDI track with an app loaded, you can import your own WAV files using AudioShare or iTunes file sharing.
With the in-app purchase, you can save and load your MTS presets. It's not shown in this video, but you can copy the WAV file from one cell to another cell by holding and dragging. In an earlier tutorial, we used a convoluter as a guitar, cabinet, and mic simulator. Now we're going to use a convoluter to give this piece a room reverb effect. Long press one of the empty master out slots and select the convoluter. I've preloaded some room impulse responses using iTunes file sharing into Multitrack Studio. Check the mix with input box. You can fade the volume on a single track in and out using the automated fader. Load the fader and then single click on it to bring up the dialog box. The fader can be drawn in and out using the pen tool. One or more tracks can be sent to a single effects loop. In this example, we're going to be sending a single track to the effects loop with the crystalline loaded using a shimmer effect. The dry wet ratios of the tracks are adjusted using the send knobs. Now we'll apply a chorus effect to the same track. In this example, the kick drum, snare, and hi-hat are all loaded on different tracks.
We'll add a little pep to the uh, snare drum using standard compression. We'll boost the kick drum by adding some low end EQ. A new feature of version 1.8 is a multi band compressor. Here I'll need to just compress the lower end of the band. Again with the in-app purchase you can save and load your own presets on every effect. The low end of the first keyboard part is muddying up the kick drum. We can correct this using a low cut filter with EQ. Use a dynamic effect to add side chaining or ducking in the mix. Here I'm going to side chain the kick drum to make it stand out in the mix. I'm also going to side chain the kick drum on the second keyboard part. Any knob or slider can be easily automated in Multitrack Studio. Press the automation button and the knob or slider of your choice. In this example we're going to be automating a fade out using the master level. Use the pen tool to draw in the automation.
In the next example, we're going to be automating the pan control on one of the keyboard tracks. Now watch as the pan knob appears to turn by itself. A small light also appears next to the knob indicating it's automated.